Hello, welcome to my channel, Crystal Heart. My name is Crystal and I am a creator, a crafter um, of many different things. And today I just wanted to make a video showing you guys how I do hand quilting, big, big stitch quilting. So um, I'm gonna first show you guys everything that I use when I do big stitch quilting and then I'll sh actually show you how I do it. So before I get started, I just want to say if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more things, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. So first things first, what do you need when you're doing big stitch quilting? So the whole purpose of big stitch quilting is just to give a more uh, pronounced modern look to hand quilting. So you will need a thicker string. So what you'll need is a pearl cotton string. I'll show you a few different ones. This one is prism with pearl cotton or any type of string or thread. You have to look at the size and the sizes are by numbers and the bigger the number, the smaller the, th the thread. So with big stitch uh, quilting, you want a size between size eight and 12 generally. So the prism is a size eight, 100% cotton pearl thread. And then I have, this is just a cheap brand. Prism is pretty cheap. It came in a pack with maybe eight colors, like a bunch of different ones. Um, I got that at Joann's. I'm not sure exactly where else they sell it. This is a brand, a Hobby Lobby brand called Artiste. And as you can see, it's $2.99 for this whole spool. And this is 100% mercenized Egyptian cotton, 400 yards, and this is a size 10. And this is the same brand, but this is one that I'm using on this project and it's like a pinkish color. So this is size 10. And in the prism, it says size eight, but looking at them, they are pretty similar in size. So I'm using these two in the project that I'm working on right now. and. They look the same. And then this is another brand, but I accidentally bought the wrong size. This brand comes from Joann's. It's called Aunt Lydia's. I think you can get it at different places, but I accidentally bought a size three and this is crochet thread, but they do have, um, in this brand, they do have size 10. I had one, I'm not sure exactly what I did with it. And the last brand that I have is DMC and it's just cotton pearl size, I think it's a size eight, I'm not sure, but this is just in white. They sell many different colors in this. I got this from Joann's, but you could get it anywhere from DMC. So that's all, that's all on threads. You'll need your thread. Then of course you'll need a needle and because your your string is thicker than regular um, sewing thread, you'll need a bigger needle. So I have two different examples right here. This is milliners um, sizes three through nine. And this pack, I believe I got on Amazon and it came with these different sizes. I chose the biggest size the longest size in the middle is what I'm working on, working with. But really, you can just use whichever needle is comfortable for you as long as the um the eye of the needle is large enough to get the thread through. And I also use a a, a threader. Um you don't have to. I did I don't always use it, but lately I've been using it. And this is another um pack of needles. They're the same sizes, three through nine from DMC. Got these from Joann's. And I'm, I've been using the biggest one, like I said, and I believe that is a size maybe three. I don't know. But these are embroidery needles. Okay. And you'll need a pair of scissors. These are just embroidery scissors. You use whatever you have. Some people use um, thread conditioner. I don't really use it, but if you find that you need it, um, go ahead and use it. And the last thing is a thimble. 
Uh, this is a leather one. I have a have an extremely hard time using thimbles. So if you're like me and you just can't get your rhythm with it, it's just not comfortable to have something so bulky on your hand, on your finger, then this is what you need. These are called thimble it's, I believe. Um, thimble it. If it's not thimble it, I'll write it on the screen. But I don't have the whole pack that it comes in. I've seen some at Hobby Lobby, but these I got off of Amazon. And it's just, these are the leather ones. They have the other ones that are like, I don't know if they're silicone or what, but they're not the leather ones. And it's just a little sticky dot. You put it on your finger like this, and then you can use that to push the needle through. All while you can still feel everything with your fingertips. And that's my problem. Like with the thimbles, I need to feel with my fingertips. That's just how I am. So using this makes things so much easier. And you need to have something. I said you need to, but I recommend having something because your fingers will hurt if you're steadily pushing that needle through all those layers of um, fabric and batting and you don't have something to help push the needle through uh, on your finger so that your finger isn't getting sore because they will get sore. All right, so that is everything for what you need to get started. Here's my project and it's a baby quilt that I'm working on. So I'll change the camera angle facing down so that I can show you guys exactly how I do it. So let's do that. Okay, so I have my project here and I'm gonna work on shadowing this area here. And I've been doing that with this brown thread. So I'm gonna take my threader and thread this thread and how long you want your thread is up to you uh, the longer the thread the more tangles you can uh, get and the more it'll start to break down the thread um, and get fuzzy so what I do is I'll just put a knot on the end However you do knots, I just wrap it around my finger and do, wrap it on my finger two or three times and do a knot. And this is not a good knot, but this is the knot. And then what I'll do is I'll pick where I want to start. And let's see, I'm not in the frame. I'll pick where I want to start. And I want to start by first coming down here and then going across. Um, I stitch from right to left some people stitch left to right you have to find what's comfortable for you so what i'll do is i'll go in an area near where i want to start but far away enough to where um i can leave the tail in and you go through that first layer of um fabric and in the batting but not in the backing and you can stick your i need to You can have your hand under so you can feel where um, to make sure the needle isn't going all the way through. And then you come out where you want to start, which I want to start right here. So I'll come out here and then you pull it through. When you get to where your knot is, your knot is up against this. What I'll do is from the bottom, I'll grip my project, I'll grip the thread, and I'll kind of jank it a little bit, pull it a little bit gently, but enough for the knot to go in the um, fabric. So the knot is in the fabric, and your string is now secure. So like I said, I'm going from this end to this end. So... I always keep my hand under where I'm stitching, but not like directly where my, my needle will poke my finger. And I forgot my thimble. Put my thimble on. And 
and what I do is I grip my fabric from the bottom kind of like this and then you go in where you want to go you have to decide how long you want your stitches to be but this is about how long I want I go in I can feel that my needle is all the way through all layers don't poke yourself and then you come up in the same distance of that first stitch you want to leave that same amount of distance distance between where you go in and where you want to come up and then use your thimble to push the needle through and then you pull and then you pull all the way through so my first stitch I was going slow and kind of um I don't know what this thread is I have to cut that but um my distance right here is a little too far so you kind of want to pay attention I should have went in here should have came back up here instead of so far out but let's do another one go in and if you don't come out in the right area you just put your needle back through and come back up and then grip the bottom pull your thread go in I'm gonna come up right here using that thimble to push that needle come up right here so I have my first three stitches down now if you don't like the way your stitches are looking you can always take them out and redo it usually generally I don't undo my stitches unless I make like a bigger mistake but you can do whatever you like and then you look at the back you want your stitches to um to look fairly even you want your stitches to be somewhat the same size as the stitches in the front and for me I don't always get everything perfect but as long as it's looking you know nice and I I'm happy with it then hey I'll keep going so you do what you're happy with if you're more of a perfectionist than me then you make sure to get yours perfect okay so now I'm going to go this way and if you need to um, if you're quilting something where you're not doing like I am just shadowing um, the pattern then you can take your fusible uh, what is it your friction pin or your uh, your erase your washable pin or whatever you use on your fabric and you can draw out or map out with your rulers what you're quilting just like any other quilting so I'm going in I'm coming up and if you get to a point where you're comfortable with it and you see this stitch is it's not straight at all but I'm just gonna let it be if you get to a point where you're comfortable with it you can go down come up go down come up multiple times and then push that needle through but until you get comfortable, you can just do one stitch at a time at a time, going down, coming up. And my hand is always under. Like giving a little tension, holding it like this. And using the thimble to push the needle so that way I'm not putting too much pressure or strain on my fingers as um, crafters and makers creators you know our hands are what we use for everything so I don't want to wake up tomorrow with my um, fingertips sore and not being able to um, do this again or not being able to um, cross stitch or do the things I like to do because now my fingers are sore and it hurts to push the needle which I did make that mistake a couple a couple of days ago and I wasn't pushing it with my finger with no thimble I was just using these fingers to push the needle through my um my thumb and my pointy finger to push the needle through and it my fingers were aching and I'm, that was the first and the last time I'll make that mistake. See, I was doing this. I was pushing it like this rather than. So there's a reason why 
things are done a certain way. Because at some point, somebody knew better. So I'm just going to do a few more stitches. And this is what these stitches are looking like. So they're fairly even. And like I said, you can do how your stitches however long or short you want to do them. Just in the in your project, you want to kind of keep it consistent. Unless you're going for a look where it's not consistent. Now, if you're doing some straight lines and you want large stitches and then small stitches next to it and then large stitches, then, hey, you know, it's your work. Do what you want to do. Everybody does what they want to do with their project. I'm just trying to show you how I do mine. And then, you know, you can build off of that and do what you want to do. But when I discovered big stitch quilting it was like wow I really was enamored with it and wanted to try it so this is the third quilt that I've done big stitch quilting on uh I did one on my daughter's quilt and if you want to see any of the other uh quilts that I've used it on you can go to my Instagram which is one crystal heart and it's also um link below my link tree is below with all of my links for everything and um you can see the quilts that i've worked on and used it on uh use big stitch quilting on and i've always on those quilts um i've combined big stitch quilting with machine quilting on this one i am not sure if i will incorporate machine quilting because i don't think this one needs it okay when i get to a point and i know i'm going this way now because i like to work right to left i turn the whole quilt and just keep my hand under it and now i'll be going this way and when i get to to a um intersection i put my needle down and then come up going sideways and now i'm going this way yeah, I'm not sure if this quilt needs machine quilting. I don't I know it doesn't need it cuz it's really coming out nicely. And sorry for the background noise uh cars are passing. But I'm thinking I may put some machine quilting on the inside and shadow the insides. I don't know. I'm really liking how it's looking with just hand quilting, but I don't know. And I'm the type of person that will work on a project until I do too much to it. So give me your suggestions. Do you think um, Do you think that I should add in machine quilting? And if you want to see this whole um, quilt top, which is um, the quilt that was in the Soul Sampler August 2021 box. It's called In Stitches uh, from Fat Quarter Shop. I believe the pattern is Lori Holt. This is definitely Lori Holt's um, fabric. But I have a picture of the entire quilt top on my Instagram if you want to see the entire thing. So, yes, yeah, that's it. We've done going this way, come back this way, going down. And as you can see, I'm using the pink to go around these little cross stitches. But I'm using the brown or natural color to go around these straight stitches that's what this is what the pattern is it's cross stitches and straight stitches so that's basically it y'all that's how it's done and it's not that hard and you just practice on getting your stitches even and straight and uniform and it'll come mine aren't perfect but I'm happy with the way this is coming out. As time will go on, I'm sure my stitching will get even better, but I am happy with it. And I just lost my, my needle just fell off the thread. So I'll end this video here.
Okay, y'all, so I'm um, editing this video and realizing, like, I for real never even showed y'all how to end the thread. So, it's like midnight, and I pulled out my quilt, and I'm going to show you guys how to end the thread. So, sorry for the bad quality, but I wanted to put this in the video, and I wanted to get the video out tomorrow. So, when you come to the end of what you're stitching and you've either ran out of thread or you're just finished with that section what you're gonna do is tie a knot and i'm hoping you guys can see tie a knot and what i do is i hold the tip of the needle at the bottom and pull so that the knot is as close mm. to the uh, fabric as possible See that? You have a knot. And then what I do is I'll take my needle and go in to the first layer of fabric and the batting only, not all the way to the back. But I'll go in right next to the um, knot. And then I'll come out. I always like to come out in the pattern area rather than the background fabric. I'll come out and then just like when you start off, you want to pull that knot into the fabric. So, sorry if I'm out of frame. You want to pull this knot into the fabric. So I'm going to pull the string, give it a little tug until that knot pops in. And then you really can't see it. So that's how you end it. And then... I'll take the thread that's left, I'll pull it a little bit, put a little tension on it, snip close to the fabric, and then when you release, the edge will pop back in and it's hidden in between the layers of your quilt. Okay, so that's it. I just had to pop in and show you guys how to end your thread. All right, you guys, so that is how I do my big stitch hand quilting uh, my needle fell off my thread so I decided to just stop stitching with you guys there but this is what we did so far and these are some other stitches I think the look of the big quilt stitching or the big stitch quilting whatever it's called I think the look is just like classic but modern all at the same time. I really, really enjoy it. You can play with the colors. Um, these strings come in so many different colors. You could play with colors. You could play with uh, sizes. If you know embroidery um, stitching and stitches, you can play with that, do some embroidery stitches. I don't know much about that, so I haven't tested that out yet, but you could play with all kinds of stuff. You can just let your creativity and your mind take this wherever you want to take it. So, like I said before, if you like this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. It really helps this channel out. And if you want to see more of quilting stuff, cross stitch stuff, and whatever else I decide to do, then you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and also notification bell if you don't want to miss anything. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.